uh, dear colleague, friends, uh, brothers and sisters, whenever you are, wherever you are, I greet you with all the blessing and greeting that you like to have. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My apology for what happened yesterday, because while we are trying to make live stream yesterday, uh, the page disappeared, and this gave us panic attack. Because I have lost my uh, other big page five months ago, and up till now, the Facebook did not recover it for me. That's why it was a panic attack. I could not be able to make the live stream yesterday. But anyway, today, inshallah, we'll start our live stream with this, the 20th episode of 5 to 5, Fatfada, talks about 17 dimensions of man and woman, each one of us having them, could have them. And I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, uh, Aya Abu Zainab, for preparing the slideshow. I'll explain the drawing to you later on, and they'll go through the slides. And for the people who are following the Facebook, I will be putting the presentation later on from the YouTube. Uh, on 29th of December 2010, I had an idea about how many dimensions the man can have. The man, I mean, is woman and man. Originally, we thought it was four dimension: the height, the width, the the height, the width, and the, the length and the time. But on that day, which 29th of December 2010, I decided to make them seven dimensions. I reviewed my thought on 24 to 28 for 2021 to increase them from 7 to 17. And my challenge to you, young people listening to me now, by 2030, I want you to make them from 17 to 27 or 230. Okay? And this is a challenge. Every time when we examine the human soul or the inner soul, we discover different depth and different dimension inside such a soul. And this will be given to you as conquest from God subhanahu wa ta'ala. Futuhat al-Rabbaniya, divine conquest. So let us start by saying what is the first, the second, third, and so on dimension. Life of every creation started with vertical meeting of two dimensions. Vertical meeting of two dimensions, like this. Vertical meeting of two dimensions. One of them is vertical dimension, which represents the intellectual and the mental direction of man. Intellectual and mental. The horizontal represent the physical and the organic growth. If at the vertical dimension represent the mental and uh, uh, intellectual growth. The horizontal represent the physical and organic growth. These two dimensions has to meet vertically in the fulcrum to create the third direction or the third dimension. So the vertical dimension, which is the mental and intellectual, meets with uh, with uh, horizontal, which is the physical and organic growth, has to meet in the fulcrum to create the third dimension. So the third dimension will do the following. The third dimension will do the following. Okay? Will make the ability of the creation of God with the animals, birds, human beings, insects, and others to survive, live in different societies, and change their course of life according to risks facing communities and plans required by them. So this third dimension will come as a result of the meeting of the first and second dimension vertically to enable 
us as human being or insects or birds or fish and other to live within our societies and to meet all the challenges. Okay. Also, the ability to mating, reproductivity, increase the population, whether among the insects, birds, animals, human beings. Okay. This is common for all the creations of God. Next slide, which is slide number uh, four. This is the third dimension. What about the fourth dimension? Now we knew that the vertical and the horizontal will meet in the fulcrum to make the third, which keep us alive, whether we are animals or birds or other creations of God, through, through, through reprodu reproductivity. The fourth dimension, there's a clear challenging message inside this dimension to all of us, whether we are young boys and girls or young men and women or whatever it is. And this come to us, this fourth uh, dimension is coming to us through the belief of ordinary people like each one of us listening to me today, because of the depth of our Iman, Allah remember them or make them to be mentioned in different books. What are these? Because of their belief, because of the strength of their belief and what they have done during their life. First of all, the story of the young, as an example, the story of the young boy, Ulam Surat al Bruj. And Surat al Buruj, who believed in the unity of God or the oneness of God. And he was challenging the king. The king was making himself a God or human God. And the king wanted to get rid of him. And he asked the soldier to take him to the middle of the sea and to throw him. The boy, the young boy, Ghulam, Ghulam in Arabic is a boy. Not, not reaching the puberty yet, uh, yet, to make a dua in the middle of the sea, and the, the, the boat was actually, uh, a wave came, and all the soldiers fell down in the sea and uh, drowned, and he came back walking to challenge the king because of his, 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 his belief. And the king asked the soldiers to take him to the top or to the summit of the mountain, to throw him from the summit of the mountain to the land. And he made the same dua when they reached the summit and there was a quake, earthquake. All the soldiers fall down and died. And he came back walking to challenge the king because this young boy has a belief in his heart which is stronger than the mighty power of the human God or this man who was trying to make himself a human God. And he told them, listen, king, you want to kill me? He said, yes, I want to get rid of you. He said, you are not going to kill me unless you do what I tell you. He said, what is that? He said, first of all, you bring everybody in the township. Tie me around the tree in the middle of the day and take from my sack an arrow and say with the name of the Lord of the young boy, and throw the arrow at me, at that time I will die. So the stupid, arrogant king did exactly what the young boy asked him to do. Soon he died, everybody in the township became Muslim at that time. This is the first example of the fourth dimension. Unbelievable power of belief in the heart of this young teenager. The second story was in Surat Kev, which every one of you is reading it on Friday. The young men, which is about, they passed the age of puberty and still young men, 18, 19, 20, 20 something. They did not want the, 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 the shirk in, in, the, in the city, the polytheism. And what they have done, they went to worship God in the cave. And Allah led them to sleep for more than 300 years. More than 300 years. And woke up and they wanted to go 
to buy some food because they're hungry. So they were discovered by the local people and they went after them and they discovered that those are the young, the seven or eight or nine or 10 or five or whatever number who left the township more than 300 years ago to hide in the cave and their dog was guiding them, guarding them, sorry. And they are mentioned in the Holy Quran as well and in other holy books as well. So the belief of the, of the, of, of the young men of Surah Cave, the belief of the young teenager in Surah Bruges made them to be remembered in all the holy books of God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are ordinary people. So they were ordinary people like you, like you and myself. The third one was a woman. When the Prophet Sallallahu was going to uh, heaven with Jibreel السلام, he smells a beautiful smell. And he told Jibreel السلام, what is the smell of this coming from? He said, this is the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. So the, what was the story of the daughter of Pharaoh, or this hairdresser? He told him she believed in Moses and she believed in the God of Moses, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah. And Pharaoh threatened her to kill her, to throw her in the boiling uh, oil, her and her children, she had five children, and was throwing the child after child till she to in front of her, making her to change her mind because her belief, she refused. I told them, Pharaoh said, what? He said, can you do me a favor? He thought that she will change her belief and become believing a believer of him. He said, yes, say whatever you want. He told her, she, she told him, sorry, when you throw me in the boiling oil, please collect my bones and put them with the bones of my children in one graveyard. This was a story mentioned to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another ordinary individual being mentioned in all the holy books of Allah because of the strength of their belief. Ordinary people, you can be like them. You can have the fourth dimension and be like the young teenager of the Surat Bruj, the young men of Surat the Cave, or the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. Not only that, but there's another one who called her the believer of Surat uh, Yasin and the believer of the family of Pharaoh. One of them was believer in Musa and his uh, message, as well as even the magician of Pharaoh became Muslim. And you know the story he told. And all those ordinary people became or mentioned up till now until Allah inherited this land actually at the Day of Judgment to be mentioned in all the holy books. Ordinary people, ordinary people, ordinary people. All these believing individuals were ordinary people like any one of us, but they managed through their own personal development to impact their societies, impact their societies. That's why they were mentioned in the holy books. The fifth dimension is done by somebody else. I've got different characteristics, like those people are change makers, but also not prophets, not messengers of God, but ordinary people like you and me. It's available for certain people when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them to lead the society and give them the ability of to make the social change. This might not be found amongst all of us. This might not be given to me or you or other, but given to those individuals who will have the ability to make the social change. Of the ability to create the required social changes and reform of the different path of societies. Such leaders and reformers are having different characteristics developed for them by the creator to enhance their capacities and enable them to fulfill their leadership duties, allowing them to create the desired change. Examples, you all know them. Muslims are not Muslims. 
Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Simon Bolivar in Latin America, Chi Jifara, all of you know him, Malcolm X, which is Malik Shabaza, Martin Luther King, Alia Ezebegovic in Bosnia, Osman Danfodio in Niger and Nigeria, and others. Those people are also ordinary people who are community leaders managed to make the change, the social change. But they have not made the global, the global social moral change to create the civilization that we are waiting to see who's going to make to make this one. This is the fifth dimension given to those people. Even Mark, even what's his name? Uh, Marx, Karl Marx, the same. Hundreds of millions of people believed in Marxism. But where is Marxism nowadays? This is the fifth dimension. This image represents the individual who have different dimension at the back of his life. As I mentioned, the five or four or three or two or seven or eight. The sixth dimension is one given to individuals also like you and me who are extremely sincere, looking for the truth of God and making a great or the greatest effort to be so close to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will open the, the doors of, of knowledge to him or her. And this where Allah can grant his divine knowledge and power, eh, the status to whom, to some of his sincere, ascetic, social, reforming believers who are working hard to revive the religion in the hearts of people. They could be elevated to the status of what? And listen to this. To the status of the knower of God, al-'arifina billah. The knower of God. Not arifina billah is not somebody like nowadays you see some of the Sufi brothers wearing uh, these strange dresses with strange colors with a lot of patches and dancing and singing and all of No, 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 no. Arifina billah, which is the knower of God, are having this connection sincere and open connection between them and Allah straight without any any fame and nobody will know them. They could be elevated to the status of the knower of God that the divine disclosure divine disclosure will be revealed for them and more divine conquering will be this sending upon them till they reach chosen elite ranks because of what because of their assiduous diligence in worshiping the creator as well as delivering community social service this is the sixth dimension you don't find them in demonstration you don't find them in marshes you don't find them wearing strange clothes. No, nobody can recognize them. I give you an example, one of them. Uh, Hazrat Abu Hassan al-Basri, there was some like say, say, yeah, in drought in, 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 in al-Basra. And uh, people were actually uh, suffering. And they went to the mosque in the evening. And there was some man in the front line making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he did not realize that Hassan al uh, Hassan al Basri was actually listening to him. And this individual made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging him to descend the rain upon the people of Basra. And instantly, Allah listened to his call. Then the man, which nobody recognized him, went to his house. And Hassan al Basri was running after him to try and find where he lives. He went to try to find his house, and next day he came to the area and asked about this man, which nobody knew that he did this dua. And this is the knower of God, not the people who make a 
demonstration and march in the street with very strange colors, wearing clothes with very strange color or butch clothes. And he asked somebody, said, do you know uh, somebody look like this? He said, yes, he is useless slave. Why do you want to buy him? I can give you a better slave. He said, no, no, I want him. So he gave him the money and he bought the slave. And he took the slave, this man, to his house and asked them, please, please repeat what you have been saying yesterday as a prayer for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told him, have you heard me saying that? He said, yes, I have. He said, since you have heard me, he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this day as the last hour of his life and default dead. This is the knower of God. The knower of God is not somebody going out in demonstration or taking money from people or wearing different strange clothes or patchy clothes and doing all this. No. Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. This is the sixth dimension. The seventh dimension is also given to one of the sincere and committed believers as a wish of somebody else, as it happened with Prophet Musa السلام, when he wanted to go and talk to Pharaoh as a request from Allah, he told him, Subhanahu wa told him, السلام, please Allah, can you send my brother with me? So he elevated his brother from the status of a human slave to God to a status of prophecy, prophets. And he took him with him to go to speak to Pharaoh at that time. This is the seventh dimension given to, the, to, to, to somebody like a prophet to make somebody special to become his assistant as a prophet. The eighth dimension is giving from a certain category of people giving a special divine knowledge. Two of them also mentioned in Surah Cave. One of them is Al-Khidr, whom Allah gave him a divine knowledge which was not given to Musa, because Musa, Musa said Musa thought that he is the most knowledgeable man on earth. So Allah sent Al-Khidr as a slave of God to teach Musa a knowledge, a divine knowledge that Allah did not give to Musa himself. You know what Al Khadr told Musa? I want to follow you, to learn from you what you have learned. He said, You cannot be patient of what I'm going to do in front of you. But if you want, if you insist to follow me, please be patient. And don't ask me a question unless I explain to you. He said, yes, I will do. Then we know the, th the three stories. When he made the hole in the ship, he started to ask because Musa is mm, a revolutionary man, salam. So I told you, don't ask me unless I explain to you. Then when Musa, when the al khidr killed the young boy or slaughtered the thought oh, he was so furious, so I told you again, don't ask me unless I explain to you. Then when he built, the falling wall to uh, in, in a village for, uh, for uh, uh, without actually asking for money from them. And the people of the village refused to host them or to give them wood, food or water. This was somebody as a slave of God has got divine knowledge which has not been given to one of the prophets. And this prophet was one of the Azm ibn Rusul, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. The second in Surah Cave was Zul Qarnain giving the power and the knowledge to go from the sunrise to the sunset to the people place where they do not know how to speak or communicate with others, which is Dhul-Qarnayn. Especially for dhul -Qarnayn. None of us could be like dhul He was an ordinary slave of God, but giving Allah gave him this kind of status to only pay their bill in two, uh, mentioned in two pages. And in these two pages, he, Allah showed us how this man 
Alayhisselam was very technologically advanced by melting the iron, the melting the copper, then mixing both of them in an alloy, then building the wall, and then refusing to take any reward from the people and to protect the people from Gog and Magog. So this is the eighth dimension. Okay? The ninth dimension is made especially for prophets and messengers of God that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him under his eyes after choosing them carefully for all the prophets of God, which we know only 50, 20, or 30, or 40 of them, but there are more than 100,000. This has been made for them, giving uh, them special responsibility and giving them special characteristics to be patient to the hardship that they are going to see when they face the challenges, once they say, talk about the oneness of God and talk to the people. The mission of such messengers and prophets was to make unnecessary social changes needed for societies across the time and the space. That's why they have different characteristics which are not given to us. This is the ninth dimension. The tenth dimension is one of those prophets, okay, mentioned or created by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and made by Allah Subhanahu wa especially, but given a special mission to save the strongest and most mighty country on earth at the time, which was Egypt. At the time, this was Prophet Yusuf salam. His mission was limited to save Egypt from economic collapse. But to prepare Yusuf السلام, Allah let him to go to many hardships from the time he's been thrown into the well, to the time that he was actually picked up by the caravan, to the time that he was sold to the master in Egypt, to the time that he had grown up and been seduced by the, uh, uh, the wife of the landlord or the chief of staff of the army of Egypt. Actually, then the time, actually, when he, the, the woman of Egypt or Cairo, or whatever they call it at the time, came and was trying to force him to do al-fahisha, or fornication, or whatever they call it, and then they be thrown into the hell and to, to the prison, unjustly, unjustly, unjustly. So during this journey of Yusuf السلام, Allah prepared him to save the economy of the strongest country on earth at that time. The special mission for Yusuf on economical ground. This was the 10th dimension. The 11th dimension was also given to prophets, whom we call them having the firm resolution. Not all the messenger of God, only five of them. Only five of them are different. Call it in Arabic, or al-azm min al-rusul. They were the ones that their social reform created intellectual revolution, humanitarian renaissance, uh, passed down through the generations in all the geographical location. Amongst them, Prophet Noah, السلام, Musa, السلام, Isa, السلام, Muhammad, السلام, and Ibrahim, of course. These are actually the the firm resolution prophets, the, 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 the prophets with firm resolution. Let us, let me take you to show you one by one. And we expect that all of them will create civilization, build the renaissance, and make the change. The first one was, which is uh, the 12th dimension, was Noah before Abraham. He was, he was inviting his people to believe in Allah for more than 950 years, and after that, they didn't believe in him. They used to cover their, their faces, block their ears, turn their back, making whistle here at their face. No, 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 no. And even when Allah asked them to make, to build the ark or the ship in the middle of the desert, they were laughing at him. <laughs> laughing at him. Laughing at him. Why is he doing this? We don't have water here. And even Noah 
could not be able to understand how to build the ship, but Allah gave him the knowledge and did not know why he is building the ship. Because Allah knows better. But when the water came from the sky and came from the land, everybody died and he saved humanity and took him bare one pair of every species on earth. But he failed to build the community because those people who traveled with him during this journey and Allah saved them, did not, some of them became disbelievers and Allah changed them again. So, so Noah alayhi salam could not be able to build the community which can build civilization and the Renaissance. The second one, which is the 13th dimension, is Prophet Abraham alayhi salam. Or Ibrahim alayhi salam. As a young man, like the young men of the cave, his father was an idol maker. He was looking for God. See who is the true God. He looked at the stars and the moon and the sun and the skies, everything. Till Allah guided him. Then he created discussion between him and the idols when everybody was actually celebrating a feast. And he told him, I am, told them, I am sick, I'm not going. Then he decided to talk to the idols, and the, none of them responded to him. So he destroyed all of them and hung the axe or the, or the, the hammer around the head of the, around the neck of the uh, largest one of them. And uh, this, you know the story. So in his, in his journey, Allah, I, I'll, just, I'll, I'll summarize it in five points as those uh, uh, prophets with firm resolution. Number one, his determination when a young man to try to find the real creator, the true creator, and he found it. His powerful belief, deep belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His invitation to his father, he was insisting to invite his father to become Muslim at that time. Then his confrontation with his community. He said, go and ask the largest one amongst them. He is the one who destroyed all of them. Listen to him. Let him talk to you. And the people in, 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 the, in the township said, oh my God, he's making a fool of us. We know that they cannot talk. What can we do to protect our idols, our gods? He said, Harliku, and burn him alive. And they brought the wood in about two or three weeks to build the huge fire. And they throw him in from a distance inside the big fire. And the angel picked him, picked him. And Allah said, Qulna naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Oh Allah said to the fire to be cool and peace upon Ibrahim. This is his patience when he was thrown by his people into the hell fire. The second patience, and this patience underlines on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second patience when he had a baby boy called Ismail, after he became a very old man, marrying to Hajar. And Allah commanded him to leave his wife, Hajar, the young uh, wife, and his baby in the middle of no man's land in Mecca, between the two small mountains, Safa and Marwa. No water, no passenger, nothing. Nothing, order, another test, hardship on him. Oh my God, this is my wife. This is my son. I'm nearly 90 or 100 years. And after all this time, I leave my son to die in the middle of the desert. His wife, Haja, told him, is this your, uh, uh, your, your, your command or command from Allah? I said, no, command from Allah. I said, don't worry. Allah will never let me, uh, uh, let us down. You go, leave. The last hardship in his life was actually after building Al-Kaaba and his son, Ismail, became like a grown-up young man. He was commanded by Allah to slaughter him. That's why we slaughtered the ram on the day of Eid. And he asked his son, my son, I have seen in the dream that I am slaughtering you. He said, Daddy, do whatever you want. He'll find me amongst the people who are patient. But Allah subhanahu wa placed it with the ram from heaven. This is Ibrahim alayhi salam, which we call him Ummah. Inna Ibrahim kana Ummah. Ummah in Arabic 
means the leader of all the imams of the prophet. He is the imam, he is the leader of all the prophets, alayhi salam. But Ibrahim, alayhi salam, also did not manage or cannot be able to build the community which built the state. So Noah couldn't, Ibrahim couldn't as well. So the other prophet who have the 14th dimension is Musa, given to given everything, the power, the magic, everything, even the ability Allah wanted him to cross the sea and, 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 and. And all these miracles were given to the children of Israel. But unfortunately, soon, they were saved from Pharaoh and crossed the sea. And Prophet Musa went to Allah to get the Ten Commandments from him, came back, he found them that they are worshiping the golden calf. And he was so angry with them. Allah was so angry with them. And he failed, السلام, Musa, to build a community or to build a state with those people. And even he let them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be lost in the in, in Sinai for 40 years, to let this, this bad generation to uh, uh, disappear and replace them with another generation. So the third uh, prophet or messenger with firm resolution failed to build a society or community. The 14th dimension given to Isa, his birth is a miracle. The pregnancy in the womb of his mother is a miracle. His communication with the people after coming out from the womb of Mary was a miracle. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to give life to the dead with the, with the word of Allah, to cure people with the word of Allah as miracles all his life. Miracles, 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 miracles. But people, instead of looking at him, and believing that he is a prophet, they thought he is a son of God. So he failed to build the community, to build civil, to, 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 to create a community, to build civilization and renaissance. And he died. His mission was limited for three years, alayhi salam. And in the Holy Bible, he said, I've been mentioned, I've been sent to save the lost children of the Israelites. So the fourth, Prophet or messenger with firm uh, resolution failed to build community or society or build actually state. This was the 15th dimension. The 16th dimension given to Muhammad Muhammad whom he managed through his mission of 23 years to build uh, a core group we call them Sahaba or companion. This core group managed with him to build a community when he immigrated with them from Mecca to Medina to lay down the first foundation of community in Medina. Even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after 23 years did not see the proper state built by himself, but it was built properly at the time of Umar when he started to make different department inside the state in Medina. So he is, or he was the only, the only, the only messenger and the prophet of Allah SWT was firm resolution who managed to build society, community, build the state, then create civilization, which lasted for 1000 years, from Andalusia to Cairo to, uh, uh, Damascus, to Baghdad, to Iran, to the Central Asian Republic, 1,000 years. No one else, no other prophet, no other messenger of God, his firm resolution managed to do this. The only one did is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the difference between Muhammad and one of the prophets or messengers with the firm resolution and his colleagues, which is Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Nuh, alayhim salam. The 17th dimension, 
everybody will say, oh, who else? Uh, there's an, another prophet above Muhammad. I said, no. 17 dimension is given to everyone. From the one who's having the first and second, third dimension to other, which is heaven. 17 dimension is about heaven and how we imagined you and me living inside heaven. As Allah SWT said, and said, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْرٌ سَمَعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى بَلْ أَحَدْ Has been related. Allah said, I have prepared for, for you. I'm talking to you, listening to me and watching me now. I'm prepared, I have prepared for you or for my righteous servants who no eyes has seen. What no eyes has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human heart has conceived. This for you, a 17th dimension is given from to anyone who is looking for Allah, not prophet, not people guided by others, no, it's everyone. The first six dimensions are given to those who look for it. Ordinary people, as I mentioned, as I mentioned. Those who wanted to discover them and serve humanity from dimension one to dimension six. But the fifth and sixth dimension especially are given to two categories of people. The fifth to people chosen for certain specific and timely mission. Okay. Which are, I mentioned them, they're making the social change, which is like uh, whether Muslims or non Muslims. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, uh, Ali Aiza Begovic, uh, Osman Damfudu, and others. Number six, which is the second, to given to sincere and faithful slaves of Allah who are trying hard to please Allah and rise to the status of who know Allah. Or the knower of God. That is through what their personal submission to Allah and community engagement to serve people. Both of them go together hand in hand. Like this slave who went to the mosque uh, because there was a famine and he was making the prayer for what? For Allah to let the, the, the rain uh, to fall. The following dimensions from the ninth to the sixteenth were only given to those who Allah chosen and made them, which are the prophets and messengers, under his eyes and they carry bigger tasks than the ones uh, in the uh, fifth and sixth dimension. But 17 dimension, as the 17th dimension given to everybody, was given to everyone, specifically the first six dimensions, to encourage and motivate people to think positively about their ultimate and final future destiny. In heaven, where no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, and what no human heart has conceived. But the different dimensions describing shapes and the images of objects are not convincing for me, because this talks only about objects, the fourth, the four dimensions, okay? Because they don't talk about what's happening inside the depth of the soul of man or human being or a creature of God, okay? I was in a meeting and somebody who is very specialized in uh, dimensional geometries asked me a very, very embarrassing question. And he told me, what you're talking about is not dimension, it's stages, like actually, you go from first floor to second floor to third floor to fifth floor to two, 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 till you go to the top. I was so embarrassed, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me to manage to respond to him. You know what I said? But for every stage or for every step, you need a space, you need a dimension, you need a horizon for this stage or this step to be within me. And he said, yes, I agree with you. So the dimension will be the thing which accommodate the stage or the step. Alhamdulillah guided to, Allah guided me to say, even so, 
there's a necessity to have these stages or levels inside these different dimensions. Uh, if you uh, call these levels, uh, we cannot find them unless we create dimensions for them, to accommodate them. This was the answer. Message to the young people, to all of you, inshallah. In my discussion with you, I have presented to you the geometrical dimension for objects, the four, the length, the width, the depth, and the time. But the other 10 dimensions or more are for humans. Are for humans. They became the parameters in our life, steady steps in the path to our successes, solar radiation in the skies of our horizons, shining moons in the deep darkness of nights, and guiding stars in our pathways. These are the other 12 or 13 dimensions. It's possible to pass the first to four, the first four dimensions which will make us ready to lead our society and make the necessary social changes needed. But regarding the sixth dimension, especially the knower of God, we have a choice. Allah has given it to those. Allah has given this sixth dimension to those who, what, who want to elevate themselves or to be elevated to the status of the knower of God. I want to become a knower of God. What to do? That Allah will lead them to discover the divine conquests every now and then. If you become a knower of God, not like the people who are jumping and marching in the demonstration, wearing very funny clothes, they are not knowers of God. They are clowns. So once you become a knower of God, like this man who made the dua in the mosque to, for the war, for the rain to fall down, uh, he, once you become, he will give you conquests every day. Every now and then. This is what has been happening through history and in different parts of the world and have produced those human stars who became the makers of moral social rules for the citizens of the universe. Amongst them, 23 individuals the ascetic slaves the knowing scholars and scientists the patient mujahideen the devout trustworthy the charitable submissive ones the fasting night standards the swimmers in the kingdom of heaven the mentors of to the slaves of allah the affluent abstinent the fighters of the corrupt and corruption, the remover of the seductive shown delusion, those who are establishing the righteousness and religion, those who their wish, their wish, their wish, their wish is to be close to the Prophet, وسلم, neither to be or the other of being afraid of Allah, his punishment, nor of dreaming to enjoy the blessing of heaven. And just want to be close to Allah and the Prophet. They don't want to enjoy heaven and they don't they are not scared of hellfire. But to have the joys of looking at the glittering glamours, glittering glamours, gl gl glittering glamorous light of the face. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the knower of God, not the clowns, not the puppets, which you can see in demonstrations. Young people, I have mentioned to you 23 characteristics inside the sixth dimension, the sixth dimension, to make you amongst those who Allah will open for you many conquests from his discoveries to make you live in his heaven on earth. Are you ready, young people, to work hard and acquire these characteristics of the sixth dimension? 
or you will be happy to swim and tour between the first and second, the second and third, the third and fourth, and the fourth and fifth. What do you want to do? You tell me what do you want to do? This will become a part of the divine desire. If we are honest, sincere, and faithful with whom? With ourselves and our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah loves you or loved you, inshallah, or oh, I mean, if Allah loved you, and this is from a hadith of Abu Hurairah, he said, when I love my slave, him or her, I become his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his leg with which he walks. And if he asks something from me, I give him. And if he asks my protection, I protect him. Al-Bukhari. This is when you become the knower of God. He will be your eyes, your ears, your hand, your leg, and everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going, young people, to be fellow travelers together? inside the course of life, road workers or friend makers coming to life to build it is corner, confronting predestination with action and prayers. Are we going to be fellow travelers traveling together inside the course of life? Road workers or friend makers coming to life to build it is corners, confronting predestination with actions and prayers. This will have been determined by the boy. Go back to the first story of Surat al Bruj, the young men of Surah Kaib, the hairdresser of the Pharaoh's daughter, the believer of Surah Yasin, the believer of the family of Pharaoh, then the magician of Pharaoh. Such people were ordinary people, ordinary individuals, like you and me, who believed in their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their communities as well. Allah have raised them to this status, regardless of the race, history, culture, language and geographical location. The question now before the last is, where are we heading to young men and women? Where are we? And what we are heading for? Are we sincere enough? Have we resolved our issues? Are we determined to carry on the mission are we going to rely on the philosophy of dependency or will depend on the creator after having a full knowledge of him, his might, and making use of all available means to do whatever possible to save our community? What do you want to do? It's entirely up to you, to us, all of us. Young people, my last question to you is, will you be able to discover, as I mentioned earlier on, the 10 following dimensions by 2030? I said, in 2010, it was seven. In 2021, become 17. And 2030, I want you to make it 27 or 30. 2030, and the create social revolution, that make the creator happy with you, with all of us, inside this sprawling universe. Revolution equivalent to that one created by the social media platform and initiated by 11 young people 20 years ago. The people who created the social media revolution 20 years ago 
were 11 young people. Or you will be able to make magnificent social and scientific achievement that can establish Renaissance and build moralities based wonderful human civilizations guided by the teachings of the messengers and prophets of God. This is the challenge and this is the message at the end. Are we able to do this? Can we do it together? If yes, let us start. Please, time is running and I have not more life to live. And I take this opportunity to thank you for being patient to be with me for these 55 minutes. And my apology for what happened yesterday, but before I end, we need to make a prayer for our sisters and brothers in India who have been attacked by these radical groups, these extremist groups, these actually terrorizing groups there and killing them and burning their houses and burning their uh, properties and torturing them. Please don't do to them what they do to you. Be patient, show perseverance, and be united and advocate for them. Human rights has to be starting from India, started from Myanmar, starting from uh, the Rohingya, the Uyghur, the Rohingya, in Arakan Burma, start from Palestine, <coughs> from Central African Republic from Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as others, 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 others. Please advocate for the needs of the oppressed, the needs of the homeless, the displaced, the tortured, the imprisoned, and all those people. And one day we will see justice prevail again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.